Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. Let's all stand this morning. We welcome the presence of God into His house. If you're watching by the way of web, welcome to the presence of God. We've come to worship God. Yes. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's good. We serve a mighty God today. Praise God. Amen, amen. Lamentations. Chapter 3, verse 30, 41 says, Let, let us. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. Let's lift up his name this morning with our heart, with our hands. Give him some glory and praise. Let's lift him up right now. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. God, we magnify your name. We've come to give you praise. God, we've come to give you glory and honor this morning and worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. God, we can worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, come before his presence with singing. Let's come before him with a song this morning. Anyone 
Let's lift him up this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome, victorious Savior. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your greatness. God, we thank you for your spirit. God, all glory belongs to you. Lord, we worship you this morning. What a wonderful spirit of worship that's in the house this morning. The glory belongs to you. Everything belongs to you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. What a wonderful presence. The Lord is in the house right now. Hallelujah. God's spirit is strong. It's great. Hallelujah. His spirit is here this morning, and it's here for you. He's here this morning, and he's willing to touch your needs this morning. He's here, and we know that God can heal your body. We know that God can touch your need, and that we know that Jesus can do anything. Amen. There's nothing that's too small for Jesus. There's nothing too little for Jesus. Hallelujah. He's conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen. And he can conquer any kind of sickness you have this morning. Right now, as the Spirit is moving, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If there's any needs that you have this morning, let it known by the lifting of your hand. God all sees all those needs right now as they put the needs up on the screen as well. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have any sickness in your body and you want us to pray for you this morning, we'll be glad to pray for you this morning. Amen. Let's lift our hands to heaven right now. we will get invited to his presence. Continue in this place. Jesus, we love you. God, we feel your spirit. God, we feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's flowing in this house right now. God, we know that your spirit is moving. God, we know, God, where your spirit is moving, Lord. God, there is liberty in the house. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for every single need in this building. God, we pray for every need that's on the screen right now. Every name, God. Lord, we know that you're a healer. God, we know you're a deliverer. God, we know there's strength and power in prayer. God, we know that effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God, we're praying right now in the, in the spirit. God, that you'll touch the needs right now. The ones that are sick in their bodies, I pray that you'll touch them. Give them strength. The ones that are hurting, the ones that are in pain, God, you have all strength and power. God, God, it's through your stripes we are healed, and we know it in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus all over this building. Now we lift our hands, and we rejoice, and we praise by faith, and we rejoice by faith. God, we know that you conquered death, hell, and the grave. And, Lord, we know there's strength and there's power in prayer. In Jesus' name.
Amen. If you have that same spirit in you, why don't we clap our hands to the Lord? God, we thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you that we have that same spirit inside of us. Lord, when you filled us with your Holy Ghost, that same spirit that raised you from the dead now dwelleth in us, Lord. We thank you and worship and praise you this morning, God, for what you're doing in this place. Amen. It's so good to be in this house this morning. Amen. Amen. So good to have all of you with us. So glad for our guests that are with us. Can we give our guests a good hand? Amen. We are thankful that you are with us this morning. Amen. So thankful for the moving of God's spirit that is in this place. And uh, how many of you enjoyed the Namies this morning? I know many of you were here at 10 o'clock. The Namies did a fantastic job. And I'm so thankful for the calling of God on their life and, the, and how God is blessing their ministry. Amen. You may be seated this morning. I'm going to run through a few announcements uh, before we allow you the opportunity to worship through giving this morning. First off, I am continuing our, our leadership series of which my wife and I will be teaching here in the sanctuary uh, this evening, of which I'm calling the Disciplines of a Disciple. And uh, as, as I've done the last couple weeks, I'm asking for all of our platform volunteers, staff, and Sunday school teachers to be here. Um, once again, this is open to anyone. Um, and our session will begin, as usual, at 6.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. The dress is casual, and we hope to see you here this evening. Also, don't forget uh, Tuesday night prayer here in the sanctuary at 7.30 p.m. as we continue to pray for our country. We had our, our monthly outdoor community prayer meeting yesterday. Um, many of you were here, and we had a great time in the Lord. Had a just, just an excellent time, and Brother Naaman then was there as well. And I thank all that attended um, that that and once again our next one will happen next month October 24th at 6 p.m. and uh, yesterday as as we were almost getting ready to close up we had we had a uh, we had some people that just pulled off the side of the road and just parked their truck right there in the grass and just walked down just to to see what was going on and they were asking you know, how you know this is awesome how often do y'all do this when are y'all doing the next one you know we if I'd have known about this we'd have been here and so that's just people that are just passing by. And once again, that was the, that's the whole reason we were having an outdoor prayer meeting, was so that people could see that somebody is praying for this community, praying for our nation. And I'm glad that people are taking notice, that people are, are stopping by and uh, excited. And once again, I, we made a contact with him. I, I texted him last night, and, and we text back and forth. And so I'm glad that we're able to make some connections in our community and let people know that we're praying for them. Amen. We hope to see everyone here Wednesday night at 7. And this Wednesday night, um, we are having guest speaker Reverend Michael Maupin will be here and uh, excited to have him. So he will be preaching this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And also this week, our annual church camping trip is here. Uh, we, we've been talking about it and building up. I was telling somebody, it's like, are you ready for it next week? And they said, it's next week. I said, I've announced it every Sunday for two months, and you still don't know when it is. <laughs> but it is, it is this week, and so we are going to Anderson County Park and we will be camping there this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we invite all of you to come out. We got the big group site, so we're away kind of off to, our, to ourselves the same way we did it last year. Anybody that wants to come out, bring your tent. You can come out there and, uh, and set up. And we'll, have, we'll be providing dinner on Friday night and Saturday night. And uh, so we want, you to, we want you to come out. We'll, we'll, we'll get the times and all that situated. We'll send those out, send notifications out. Um, how many of you have been receiving the notifications? Amen. So if you have, once again, if you haven't, if you download our app, just go to your app store on your phone, type in Eagle Bend Apostolic Church. If you download the app and check that you want to receive notifications, push notifications, it's a very simple and easy way for us to keep you updated on events. And if, Like this Sunday, for example, we kind of flip-flopped our services, moved Brother Naomi, that all that happened, you know, at Brother Naomi's request. And so... It's a very easy and simple for us to be able just to send you push notifications. That way you can look at it when you want to and read it, and you're not having to try to answer a phone call when we do the one call or something like that. So once again, if you, do, if you haven't do that, if you haven't downloaded our app, I encourage you to do so so we can keep you updated on all of that. And also with the camping trip next Sunday, October the 4th, our service, of which we're having right now, will take place at the campground. So next Sunday, if you show up here at 11... 15, 11, 30, there won't be anybody here. There may, may be somebody here. They'll be the same boat you are. So, <laughs> but if you, if you get here and, and it's just one or two or you see somebody here, just bring them with you and y'all come on down to the campground. So we will, ha we will have service at 11 o'clock next Sunday morning 
at, at Anderson County Park at the campground. We'll have the praise team there. We're going to sing. We're going to preach. We, we'll have a full service there. We did this last year and, and had people come from the campground that came and wanted to see what was going on, hearing the music. And so we're hoping to do the same thing. And we will be having lunch to follow. We're doing the Low Country Bowl again this year. And so come on out. And we won't make it quite as spicy. Some people last time were like, it was too spicy for us to eat. So we'll, 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 we'll do a couple. We'll, we'll mix it up. We'll have a, a, spi a real spicy and a not so spicy. So that way we can try to please everyone. Amen. Is that all right? <laughs> so y'all come out and we're looking forward to having a great time with this. And uh, we're also excited to be starting our Sunday night services back the following Sunday on the 11th. Once again, I know this is a lot of information about the next couple weeks. But October the 11th, we're starting our Sunday night services back. And uh, Brother Jacob Kaiser will be preaching our first Sunday night back. And uh, excited about that. Amen. And we are also excited to be returning to our 1115 worship service time on that same Sunday. So 1011 is a big day, a lot of, lot of change. I say a lot of change. It's really changing kind of back to what we were doing before COVID. So for some of you, you may be excited. For other of you, it's change. But once again, that we live in a world of change right now. Everything's changing. And so... 10, 11, October the 11th, we'll start back worship service at 11:15 and our Sunday night services at 6:30 p.m. One last thing, as our ushers make their way at this time, uh, if you have anything in the, the the large cubby that's behind the purple walls, uh, if you want to check back there, we're getting ready to remove that cubby. So we ask that you please. Once again, there's names and labels. We're not going to come track down every single person that has a sheet of paper in there. So. You have until next Sunday to get the, get anything you want out of there. Otherwise, we're trying to get rid of that and move that out so we can make room back there and just do some, some spring cleaning in the fall. So once again, we ask that you would help us out with that. Anything you want out of there, please take it home with you. Just stop by after service and get that. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. And... This morning, once again, we've already had the missionary, and I told you we would give you the opportunity to give this morning. Um, Brother and Sister Naomi are, are, are tremendous people. They have a tremendous ministry, and they have touched many, many lives. And right now, they are, they are not able, as they already said, they are not able to go to the Philippines. And this, this happened. They were actually, they were telling us last night, they were in Myanmar helping out of work there when the Philippines shut down. So they had literally, they were just, you know, they left for a weekend, went to Myanmar, and before they could come back home, the Philippines shut down, and they were not able to return home. They weren't able to return to Hong Kong. So they literally had to just figure out a way to get from there to the U.S. before things shut here. This was in February, and they have not been able to return. The Philippines won't let them back. Hong Kong won't let them back. So they literally left to just go out and preach on the weekend like they normally do, and haven't been able to return home in months. And so they, they have, as you can imagine, have a lot of questions. And, and they've been able to just hear. They've been able to stay in contact. But things are deteriorating very quickly uh, in, in the Philippines just with the economy. Everything is shut down there. They went into more detail with us of how bad things have gotten due to COVID. Here we complain if we have to wear a mask or not. There they don't have food to eat. They're not letting people out. And once again, most of these people rely on public transportation to get anywhere because $5 a day, you can't really afford a car and gas and all these different things. But the country is so densely populated and so packed that they're so afraid that, once again, if, if it were to get into their country because of the way that the heat there and everybody packs into everything, they said, you can't walk, out, walk in a street in the Philippines and you're not bumping everybody's shoulders the whole time you're out in public. So because of that, everything has just been shut down on lockdown. Nothing's running. Nothing's operating. There is no public transportation. People aren't able to travel. And that's what he's talking about, you know, about ro roves of bands, you know, that are going through and just robbing people's homes and home invasions and things are getting rough. But at the same time, it is turning so many people to the church looking for help because their government's not helping them and the world's not helping them. But the church, this is the church, the time for the church to shine. 
and the church has been able to do so. Even though they can't physically be there where they want to be in the Philippines, they're able to send nearly every dime of money they can get back to the Philippines, to the churches that goes to those churches and the pastors. And, and, and the money, when it goes to the churches, they, they're able to meet their needs as far as covering just whatever utilities and stuff. And then all the rest of the money that goes to the churches, each of those churches is then distributing and giving out, buying bags of rice, and taking things to the community. And, and once again, as he said, there have been hundreds of people that have been baptized in the name of Jesus, hundreds that have been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost just during the last few months because they've seen the giving of the church. They've seen an apostolic church that is willing to give, and that only happens because of, of people like us, people like you that are willing to take that and say, I want to give. I want to help. I want to make sure that, that somebody there has, has food to eat. And so this morning, as we give, I want you to consider, and once again, yes, giving your tithes and offering, but also consider giving above that and giving towards the Philippines specifically. Um, this morning, he, he gave us a few different ways or, or needs that, of ways we could help. One is, is giving towards the Bible college. So this morning, if you want to give specifically towards the students and helping in that, in that role, once again, you can give through PayPal. You can give through our app. You can write it on a, on a tithe envelope, however you want to do it. But if you write the, the, the Bible College in the Philippines, if you specifically list at Bible College in the Philippines, it'll go towards those college students. It'll go towards helping them. If you want to give towards the churches, you can just write Philippines on it. That way, any, anything that's just labeled Philippines will go towards helping the churches, helping the people, helping them eat. And if, and if once again, if you wanted to go towards the Bible College, just list it as Bible College in the Philippines. But once again, anything you give will help. Anything you give will be a blessing. There is no amount too big or too small that we can give that would help someone eat, that would help someone have a meal. Because I know many of us, even though, yes, things are different and things have changed, I, many of us still aren't having to worry about where our next meal is going to come from. But that's not the case in most of our world today. And so we have the unique opportunity to partner with Brother and Sister Naomi and to help in a country that is many, many, many miles from here, but we're still able to make an impact. And so this morning, as they put our prayer up on the board, I want you to, to pray this with me over our offering right now. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given back to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. I invite you to march and give your tithes and offering and any special offerings for the Philippines this morning under the direction of our ushers at this time.
from my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into a family your blood flows through my veins Hallelujah. So thankful that we don't have to be a slave to fear. For God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power. 
man. We have the power to overcome any fear, any spirit of fear that would ever rise its head up against us. And I'm so thankful for that. Thankful for his loving spirit that is in this place right now. God, we worship you. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. Such a sweet move of his spirit that is in this place right now. I want to ask you to stand one last time this morning. Amen. In honor of the, the word of God and the man of God. Once again, we've already heard from Brother Naomi, who did a phenomenal job this morning. Amen. But before we leave this place this morning, we're going to hear from our founding pastor, Pastor Triplett. And I'm so thankful for all that God is doing in this place. So thankful for, for just being able to come here and be able to, to work alongside Pastor Triplett in the last three years. Um, there's no finer man that I've ever served with. And I'm honored to bring him to this pulpit this morning. Can you make the Lord and Pastor Triplett welcome as he makes his way to this pulpit? Amen. Now let's give the Lord a good hand. Come on, let's love him. Come on, let's honor him. He is worthy of our worship and our praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we worship you. Oh, we pour out our praise to you. Jesus, we honor you. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so glad to see all of you and gratified to see each of you here in the house of the Lord to worship with us together today. today. Welcome to all of our beloved saints and friends. Especially glad to see Lindsay and, and her little babies back here. Praise God. God bless Lindsay. <clears throat> Praise God. <clears throat> I'm going to speak from a very from a passage of scripture. I will speak briefly this morning. We've heard such great things from Brother Naomi, <clears throat> and my soul was touched with the work in the Philippines. And those people, ladies and gentlemen, those people need us. They need this church. And I and I want to encourage you, and I want to say one. I want to say in, in in that same vein, the world needs the United States of America to remain a Christian nation, so that we can affect the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I want you to I want you to be on your face before God. This is the most momentous election of our lifetimes. And we need to pray and seek God. We need to pray and seek God that godly people who love God and who love the United States of America will be elected to lead our nation. I ask you, intercede before God. Acts chapter number 9 and verse number 11. <clears throat> and uh, I want to focus on the last phrase uh, of this passage of Scripture. Behold, he prayeth. God spoke this to my heart yesterday. Behold, he prayeth. <clears throat> Let's just lift our hands for just a moment. Would you do that? Stretch your hand this way and, and pray a little bit. God, we love you. We thank you. We worship you. We praise you for this great congregation of great people that are here to worship a great God. Great things are happening, God, because you are here. Great things are happening because your word is being preached and promulgated. Great things are happening because people are obeying you, Lord, and seeking you, God. And we worship you. You are a great God. You always lift us up, oh God. You always, Lord, take us to a brighter place, a, a hopeful place, God. And we worship you, and we thank you for what we feel today. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift up your hands and come on, let's just love the Lord. Let's just worship Him. If we get nothing else done, if we pour out praise to God and nothing else happens, then we've fulfilled our purpose here today. God, we worship you. We love you, God. Our lips speak forth your praise. Thus will I bless thee. My lips shall praise thee. And I will lift up my hands in thy name. Oh, God, if I will praise you and I will lift up my hands, it will bless you. <laughs> oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name. I lift up my voice in my hands in honor to that saving name. 
that forgiving name, that merciful name. God, when we speak that name, forgiveness is present. When we speak the name of Jesus, mercy is present. When we speak the name of Jesus, grace is present. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for praying. <clears throat> Yesterday, our good missionary to the Philippines, Brother Naomi, joined us at our community-wide prayer meeting in the parking lot. And we asked him to be one of the speakers. Our format was we had to have a song and then we'll have a brief exhortation from a preacher and then we would pray for a little bit and then another song and another brief exhortation and pray some more. And, and so the afternoon or so the evening went at 6 o'clock. And the subject that Brother Naomi chose was intercessory repentance. Intercessory repentance. And this is a biblical concept of one who is right with God, repenting in prayer on behalf of another who has sinned, and interceding in prayer on behalf of the sinner. Job said this, the Bible says that Job offered sacrifice for his children, and he said, perhaps they have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Maybe not even anything outward, but maybe they've thought something that is against God in their heart. And Job interceded and offered sacrifices for his children. And so again, intercessory repentance was Brother Naomi's subject. And again, it is a biblical concept of one who is right with God, yet repenting in prayer on behalf of another who has sinned. And interceding in prayer on behalf of the sinner. Brother Naomi then encouraged us, those that were gathered there, to intercede on behalf of the United States of America. The, the title of our, uh, of our prayer meeting that we're having weekly on Tuesdays and then monthly out there on Saturday evening. You can see it out there uh, on the signs that are along the road. Pray for the USA. So Brother Naomi then encouraged those gathered in the parking lot to begin to intercede on behalf of the United States of America. And we did pray. And we did repent. And we did intercede for our nation in the parking lot. And Brother Naomi said something that touched me. He said, you know, I really, I really feel the Holy Ghost out here. Hallelujah. I really feel the Holy Ghost in here this morning, folks. Praise God. And I know that God is pleased when we intercede and when we pray. <clears throat> and so we did pray for our nation in the parking lot. And I learned something last night. Amazingly, that thousands of churches across the United States are observing this Sunday, this Sunday today, as a national day of intercession and repentance. And so Brother Naomi's choice of subject in our parking lot, intercessory repentance, was spot on. God spoke to him, intercessory repentance. And so, again, we did pray and intercede for the United States yesterday. And so, I want to ask the question, for what does the United States need to repent? In a prayer before the Kansas State Senate, Reverend Joe Wright, the pastor of Central Christian Church in Wichita, Kansas, in his prayer, he enumerated our national sins. And he prayed thusly before the Kansas legislature. And I will say that over 50 of the legislators walked out during this prayer. So let me read it to you. He prayed, Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask for your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know that your word says, Woe! to those who call evil good. But that is exactly what we as a nation have done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and we have reversed our values. We confess that we have ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and called it pluralism. We have worshipped other gods and called it multiculturalism. We have endorsed perversion and called it an alternate lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. 
We have killed our unborn babies and called it choice. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have shot abortionists and called it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it politics. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O God, and know our hearts today. Cleanse us from all of our sins and cause it Cause us to return to you in the name of our living Savior and your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray these things. Ladies and gentlemen, our nation needs us to repent for her sins. We have sinned. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has sinned. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we need to pour out our souls in repentance before our God. And God will hear our prayer. Because God brought something to me yesterday, and I want to share it with you. Saul of Tarsus also sinned greatly against God. He was a blasphemer, the Bible says. He was persecuting Christians. He was capturing them and having them cast into prison. The Bible says his desire was to kill the saints of the Lord, and he participated in the stoning of Stephen, the first martyr of Jesus. He was a blasphemer. And a killer. But God shined a light on Saul's pathway. And Saul, who before was a blasphemer, began to fast and to seek God. And this is what God said of Saul in Acts 9. Behold, that blasphemer is praying. That murderer is praying. That one who persecuted the church of the living God is praying. And ladies and gentlemen, our, our nation may have sinned greatly, but we are praying. We are praying out here in the parking lot. <laughs> Yesterday, Vice President Pence and Franklin Graham led a prayer march from the Lincoln Memorial up the mall to the nation's Capitol building. Ladies and gentlemen, our nation is praying. Thousands of churches today are praying and interceding on behalf of our nation. And so there was hope for wicked, arrogant, stubborn, sinful Saul. Because when reality hit him, he humbled himself and prayed. When the light began to shine on his pathway, then there is hope for our wicked, stubborn, sinful nation also. If we will pray, ladies and gentlemen, there is hope. I want you to know people are praying. Listen to this. The Catholics of the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart of Jesus have committed themselves to 40 days of prayer and penance, which is penance, which is repentance and fasting. They have committed themselves to 40 days of prayer, penance, and, and fasting. That is going to end on election day. Ladies and gentlemen, the Catholics are praying. Praise God, the Baptists are praying. The Presbyterians are praying. And the Apostolics are praying, and there is hope for our nation. Yeah. Folks, there is hope for our nation. <laughs> Oh, I want you to stand with me this morning. God, I want you to stand and I want you to begin to gather around this altar right now. And I want you to come. And you may not have done anything wrong, but you can pray. You can intercede on behalf of our nation. You can begin to pray for our president and for our vice president and for our Congress and for our leaders. You can pray. For our nation, you can pray for our upcoming election. If you would right now, would you lift up your hands and would you lift up your voice and would you say, oh God, I repent on behalf of my president. Oh God, I repent. Would you begin to pray with me right now? Come on, let me hear you pray. If you, if you want to stay in your seat, that's fine. But would you join us? Would you pray? in intercessory repentance, and would you repent on behalf of our nation that God would save us and draw us back to him.
the world starts changing, when the church starts praying, strongholds start to fray. Oh, when we pray, prison walls start shaking at the sound of praise. And nothing stays the same. Oh, when we pray, all the world starts changing. When the church starts praying, strongholds start to pray. Oh, when we pray, prison walls start shaking at the sound of praise. join me right now and pray that that people who love God and people who love the United States of America would be elected. We have prayed in it and repented. Now I want you to join me in prayer that God would allow people who love God and people who love the United States of America would be elected. Would you lift your hands and would you pray that prayer right now? Come on, let's pray. Come on, send your voice up to heaven. Send your intercession up to heaven. Your children are going to live in the nation that you choose. pray one more prayer and then I'm going to let you go. This one's very important. They're all very important. But this is what I want you to pray. The Bible says that the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil wants to steal this election and steal our nation from us. The devil wants to destroy our way of life and our, our national government. The devil wants to destroy that because he hates it. And thirdly, the devil wants to kill people. He is killing people in these riots. And it's going to get worse except we stand against it. Now, this is the way I want you to pray. I want you, I want you to rebuke the work of the devil in Jesus' name. I want you to speak it out of your mouth. I want you to get bold in the Holy Ghost. And I want you to rebuke lawyers that are trying to 
to steal votes. I want you to rebuke votes that are being stolen by the post office and so on. I want you to rebuke in Jesus' name all of this unrest and send out in Jesus' name holy angels to help in this moment. Did you hear me? I want you to get busy right now. Come on. Lift up your hands. Pray. Rebuke. I want it to come out of your mouth. In Jesus' name, I rebuke the devil that's trying to steal our nation. I want you to speak that. I rebuke lawyers that are preparing papers to confuse this election. We're not going to let the devil steal it. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. God, I send angels out to help our election workers. I send angels out. In Jesus' name, I rebuke evil. I rebuke evil men. I rebuke the work of Satan. Come on, pray it now. Thank you for praying. I think it can be clearly seen how much the world needs us to remain a Christian nation. If our nation falls, the Philippines is going to starve to death. If our nation falls, ladies and gentlemen, the economies of the world are going to crash. If our nation falls, there's going to be hell to pay. Ladies and gentlemen, in this nation We need to pray desperately that this nation will remain a Christian nation so that your children and my children and my grandchildren can live in a godly and a Christian and free nation. Let's pray in dismissal, God. We thank you now that we've been in this place. God, we are your chosen intercessors. God, you looked and wondered that there was no intercessor. Well, Lord, here we are. We're standing in the gap for our nation. We're praying for our president. We're praying for this upcoming election. We're praying, oh God, and repenting for our nation. Hear our prayer, God. Keep us, Lord, on, the, on, on, our, on our knees, God. Keep us praying throughout in these coming days. Help us to send up mighty, powerful prayers to you. Keep us as we leave now. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. God bless you. We love you all and thank you for being here. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.